Hi. Welcome to Solving Your Problems. I'm All of them. Excited. Welcome to the Financial Favor Podcast. I'm Todd. That's Aisley. We're excited to, to have you. Today we're going to be talking about, well, solving more people's problems, financial problems, what we do here on the Financial Favor Podcast. Makes sense, right? And then also, don't forget, if you guys want your questions featured, put them in the comments down below, shoot us some DMs, all of our socials are in the description down below, as lo- as far <clears throat> as well as uh, further resources, further, resor- further free resources, our newsletter, everything. So if you want financial help, if you want to start getting better at this stuff, uh, you can click the links down in the description below and we'll be able to help. So with that. We are doing more Reddit stories today. Nice. And I found a new Reddit forum. Instead of r slash what, personal finance? Yes. So I found some today on r slash r slash entrepreneur. Oh, okay. Cool. So I was like, I want to find something that's a little bit more than just personal finance because we talk about more than just that on this podcast. Right. So um, a few of these are a little bit different They're than what we like have been reading, but I didn't want them all to be just the same, like everybody's story over and over again, you know? Yeah. Just, just feed, just we're just feeding everybody now, you know. Cool with that. Okay. okay. A lot of our audience is too, like business owner, yeah. slash wanting to be entrepreneurial, get out of the W two styled, you know, income job. So it fits. It works. Okay. Would you like to hear a personal finance story or an entrepreneur story first? I want to do an entrepreneurship one now. All yeah. right. Okay. Um, and some of these are more mindset too, and the entrepreneur one. It's not just like business ownership. Yeah. It's people asking about like, like mindset stuff. Okay. Right. All right. First story. This is a short one. Okay. I also like entrepreneur because they're short. <laughs> yeah. They're to the point. This is for, this is for my personal gain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Titled. This is business. Nothing personal. I will. I'll assume. We'll, we'll find out if it's personal. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. This is going to be him getting screwed over. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've always heard the saying, this is business, nothing personal. But in the real world, it can sometimes be challenging to keep th- these two aspects separate. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts and experiences on this matter. Is it business and nothing personal or not? I think it's both. I mean, especially depending on what, depending on what it is. Like, so in my experience, the best... The the best the best business that you have right is through relationship. Like relationships are like the true currency of business, your growth, finances, everything. So if relationships are your currency, like the actual currency that actually matters, and it's actually you know measurable. So I I can see why people so that that's more so of like oh it's business and nothing personal. Yeah, when. A lot of tough decisions have to be made in business. Like it has to make sense. The point of business, the point of being in business is to A, complete a mission and B, make money. That's the two point of the business, right? Sometimes those get swapped. Sometimes the point of the business is to make money and it's not necessarily purpose driven. And that's fine too. And at that point, yeah, I can understand that it's just business and not personal because your decision, your decisions have to be based in making the company better and stronger, not having an just individual person get better or stronger. So I think that's what that that saying really means to me, understanding that you have to make tough decisions sometimes because it has to make financial sense. And sometimes if people aren't working out, it's actually a disservice to them to keep them around. So that's when I when I think of like that saying, that's what I think of. Okay. I asked you this one. I, I picked this one because I was like, I, I honestly didn't know how you were going to answer this one Yeah. because you are so good at bringing your family into your business constantly. Yeah. <laughs> you are just surrounded by family members that work for you. Yeah. So I didn't know how you went about it's business, nothing personal when it is in fact personal because they are in fact your family. Yeah. So we it's, it's your personal it. life too. Is what we I, could talk about that. That's what I, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not, it's not easy all the time, but I think a lot of it is set up early on in expectations. So when you think about the people that I work with or I work around, a lot of them are family. A lot of them are friends. Your as wife, well. yeah, my wife's me, involved. Yeah, my dad. Yep, and my o- grandma and other. My brother, your brother, yeah, yeah, and and, and others. He um, loves to employ his family and friends. <laughs> yeah. So, but what what do you, all, you can you should be able to answer this? What do all of you have in common? Don't just say family. Uh, I, that's what I was gonna say. So <laughs> troll. <laughs> well, I don't know. What do we have in common? You have really good skill sets. Oh well, yeah. Your dad is unbelievable. He is the MacGyver of everything. He sent me a picture earlier today of a mousetrap that he built. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And he was like, painting, did, did he send you the picture of him painting the stairs of the house? Yeah, you built his own jig to have a ladder yeah. on the stair. Like, yeah. So 
he's the guy that can do anything at any time. He's unbelievable, right? Yeah. Like he has that skill set. Like I, you can't replicate that outside. No. Right. My brother's unbelievable at digital website design, um, art. Like he's illustrating the books, like all of those things. Like he's great at all that. What are you great at? What's uh, what's your uh, what's Gigi great at? You know what I mean? Like so, everybody has these specific. Oh, skills. so you're not gonna toot my horn and tell everybody what I'm good at? I no, see we don't how, need to be here I'm all kidding, day. I'm kidding. We don't need to be here all day. I mean, you're great at everything. I'm good right? at everything. Something good at everything. It. So fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you have people with specific skill sets, D's super operational. So that's why she's our COO. So. And keeping stuff like that in the family, it's perfectly fine to me. What you don't see me do is hire in the family that its skill set doesn't match. Or hire somebody just because they're family. Just because they're family. That's yeah. one of the worst things that you could possibly do is yeah. just hire someone because they're family or friend. Because it never it never ends well. Yeah, that's like the only the, reason the, it never ends well. The skill sets not only have to be different, but have to match, which is yeah. very confusing to people. You have to be able to hold two differing thoughts in your head at the same time. Yeah. And still be able to act well, which is really difficult to do. Right. So I have to be able to understand like, okay, they have a great skill set. So that's a match for me because I don't have that skill set. So therefore together we will be better. Yeah. So it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy to do, but you can absolutely do that and, and run your business that way. Okay. That was a good question actually, yeah. because of, I didn't think of it that way. I, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that until you mentioned that. Yeah. And I, I don't even know if I realized you that we talking had 10 and I was family like, members together. <laughs> yeah, you started talking about it. And I was like, this is not where I was going with this, but go ahead and keep talking. I was like, we'll get to the family thing in a moment. Yeah. It, it just didn't click in your head, but that's okay. Yeah, the, um, yeah, the biggest piece there being, that's because I'm thinking of skill sets yeah, yeah, and position yeah. first. Yeah, versus you were thinking just, like business, not like your circumstances. Just like yeah. just versus just relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, top comment says businesses businesses are designed. I'm struggling with my S's today. There's so S many S's in all S's. these words. Businesses are designed to make money. Anything else is not a business. Decisions being made to ensure the making of mon said money are business business decisions. There's so many S's in this. Know, right? Are business decisions. If the decision is bad for a person, then sorry, but it's good for the business and the and the point of the business. Don't. It's that simple. Don't make it more complicated. Yeah. Okay. Can be. That's great. Okay. Anything, any last words? That was more so in line with what I was saying. Yeah, the first time. On. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, you got to understand the point of it all first and then the why, and then you can act on the why. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Story number two. This is coming from r slash personal finance. What happens to people who don't care about financial planning? Uh, they wither. <laughs> they perish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they get on they get on Reddit when they're 65 with <laughs> no savings. I have no money. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Usually. Titled What Happens to People Who Don't Care About Financial Planning. For context for context, I am a planner. Last night I met an intelligent woman, probably late fifties or so, and at one point I said I listened to a lot of podcasts, mostly financial. Her response was, Oh, I don't think about money. I I know she has some real estate investment. Um and she said and she went on to say, Everyone I know made money from real estate. None of them ever made money in the stock market. Several others at the table agreed. They, in quotes, never think about money or financial planning, end quote, um, almost as if th that would be unethical. I was and still am dumbfounded. It's not that everyone should be obsessed with planning for financial security or retirement, but to never think about it. Another friend told us that we were another friend told us he was ready to retire and he thinks he has about 60K saved in his 403 plan. 403. Oh, no, not another. There's, plan more, it's thing. More, there's more than 401k? Yeah, it's different. I thought that was a like 403 is like a, a savings. I don't know the exact definition of it. Okay. Another friend told the, us it's, it's one. It's one of the many. The 401k is the most popular. Okay. One. It's I didn't the, know there was more. Yeah, oh yeah. They, okay. they, they, yeah there, there's a bunch of different quote unquote savings and retirement plans, but. Okay. Another friend told us he was ready to retire and he thinks he has about 60k saved in his 403 plan and thought that would be enough. In our area, 60k would not last or not last two years. I began to wonder what actually happens to the people who never think about money. In quotes. I know some of them luck out, but they all can't. Oh yeah, no, they end up. They, there's a reason there is assistance programs, people living with other people. They have, they, they end up having to survive off of others. What kind of peace do you have to have to just not think about the future at all? Is it is it a level of zen that you have, or is it a level like is it just zen like everything will work out, it's fine, or is it like a like chaos and you just don't think about it because you're so. But what what how does that happen? It's a good question. Like, 
Like, is there a certain level of like anxiety and stress you have to reach to where you don't think about it? Or is it the polar opposite where you don't think about it because you're just so Zen? I think it depends on the person. So there's some people, right? And I'm just thinking about like all the people that I've worked with personally, and I'm kind of like pulling them together. There's some people to your point that are like just super chill laid back. They're very in the today. Yeah. What matters more than today? What's the point? Which fair. Okay. True. Uh, You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Do it today. Yeah. Uh, there's some people who are definite planners. There's, there's some people who are so focused on the future that they don't live today. The other group, okay, the people that definitely don't think about it, it's not that they don't think about it, they're so fearful of it that they run from it. So that's a, that's a, okay. that's a, that's a different one. Deal with a lot of that because there's a lot of fear behind it. But to not, but to not think about it at all, it could be uh, an upbringing as well. So, I mean, if you were always stable... If you were always, if you always had like your basic needs met oh. and provided for, it's never been a stress. It's never been a conversation. Yeah. It's never had to be a conversation. So if that's built into you, you might not think about it much. That's good. I didn't think about that either. So I think about my own upbringing in that sense. It was never really thought about. It was never really talked about. Like basic met, basic needs were met, calm upbringing, calm scenario. We were focused on baseball and things. Yeah, you know. So it was it was never it was never really talked about in that sense. And then when I got out, I didn't start thinking about money until I didn't have any. <laughs> yeah, but it happened it like, really then early. To, then so I, like then I had to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, but what? Are, how do people get to the age of sixty and not think about it at all? They're like, oh, I don't think about money. Yeah, maybe they've just always had a job that provided enough. They just always went to the next job. It, it could be it could be vision. It could be, um, again, I, I think a lot of that lies in living in the day, living for today. Wow. We're seeing this unfold live. These comments seven minutes ago, three minutes ago. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, top comment. They work past retirement age and depend on social security and America's tattered safety net programs. They rely on... <laughs> <laughs> they. <laughs> <laughs> see yeah <laughs> they rely on family especially kids to support them they're forced to, uh forced to cut lifestyle to the bone because they there's just no money and their credit dries up um when you have fixed income and creditors see real risk that you'll die in insolvent 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 never heard that word can't pay your bills okay you'll die insolvent Bankrupt. and and leave them holding the bag having a bunch of real estate is a retirement plan too either as a constant stream of income or assets to sell or both but a lot of people co um, come to a rude awakening when being 65 doesn't suddenly mean they're enjoying golden years happily there is no magic and social security isn't much to live on i've never understood the golden years thing either that's a these are the golden years that's, that's i'm in the golden yeah. years oh yeah i'm in the golden years yeah, i'm in my, i'm peaking I i'm in my believe, prime can't believe you're not on a plane right now <laughs> Can't believe we nailed you down for thirty five flights and a half this year. Yeah. <laughs> thirty five flights this year? Yeah. Yeah. Like why I would like to update I don't understand the, the goal. Can I update thing. the the, the yes. listeners? Yes, yes. I am on house arrest. There's <laughs> I have an ankle monitor. Um and my house be, means Akron, Ohio, Canton, Ohio. Yes. I'm wearing an ankle monitor and I will not be having any flights until March of twenty twenty four. March to March twenty twenty four. So if you hear so me get on this podcast home. and I say, I have a flight next week, I'm not gonna be here, you need to <laughs> Yeah, I've never understood the golden years. You're thing. still in pretty golden years, I'm, I would I'm say. Get on a <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I would say I'm those are pretty golden, in golden years. years. How am I not? You're in pretty golden years. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're just not young like me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. Where do I even start with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Let but I'm gonna let the comments handle you. But why? Why does 65 have to be the golden years? I that that's my question. I don't think he. I don't They're think he's out of his golden years. I'm kidding. Because you're done with work. You don't actually want to be done. Yeah, with no, work. because the second you stop working, yeah, you die. Yeah, basically, yes. Yeah, statistically, it's 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 not it's not like just like mindless work. It, it's yeah. when you it's when you quit. Like if you quit mentally, like typically people will just sit and they won't do anything, right? They kind of go out to like to be retired is to be put out to pasture. You don't want to be put out to pasture. Yeah. Um, okay, one more comment. I try not to get too negative with the topic, but it is something that is going to get worse as society continues. Nearly half of Americans do not have a retirement fund, and then they drop a link, um, like probably no, where source. they got where they yeah their source. Yeah. Very he's getting, good. He's getting banned for that link. 
You're pulling people off the platform. <laughs> Many that do barely contribute or take withdrawals, um, which hurts themselves in the long run. Cost of living uh, just keeps going up. Many people think that Social Security will sustain themselves once they retire. But depending on who you talk to, the longevity of Social Security is in question. I still think that Social Security will always be around, but it will never suffice as the only form of income for someone's post-retirement. Well, it can't. Yeah. So Social Security is actually the biggest Ponzi scheme in the world. It, it really is. So everybody pays Worse into- than 401k? Oh yeah, okay. not not even close. Not even close. Okay. Not even close. Am I paying into Social Security? Every you, you don't have a choice. Everybody does. That's like in my taxes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You you gonna you gonna you gonna find a hard time getting around that one. Um, yeah, well, at so, least I'm getting something back. Yeah. <sighs> Where? When you're in your golden years? Well, the rest of my taxes just get eaten up, and then the pod the bottles don't get filled, and <laughs> With God. so at least I know I'm getting something back. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's one way to look at okay i'll look at it that way with yeah, you yeah like cool. in my mind my tax money and they just take it and they just like burn it so <laughs> if your... like the rest of my tax money at least like they they're the homeless are still homeless yes. nobody's getting food from the government the the like my the potholes are not getting filled so my tax money is gone they're I, they literally are lighting it on fire i love the that the potholes is such a focus for you. it is <laughs> it makes me so mad when i'm driving on a road that i pay tax dollars to get fixed and it my it breaks my car there's parts falling out of the bottom of my car what if that was property taxes not government taxes what <laughs> what <Huh? laughs> the roads the roads your local area yeah right everything is property taxes. oh you well it's still your, taxes i'm still should, paying them am i not oh yeah the property taxes is like the one tax that i'm like i get it i'm paying them yeah so yeah fix that's them. like the one that's the one we like don't argue yeah, yeah they take my money they don't give me a choice fix the things that need fixed but yeah, i'm not saying the leadership the point i'm saying is at least i'm getting something back because I didn't know I was getting Social Security. You just yeah, you just dropped a bomb. Boom. Yeah, I no, didn't know I was paying for that. So at least I'm yeah. getting something. Yeah, no. So, Social Security is the biggest Ponzi scheme in the world because you have more and more people that need to take advantage of it, but you don't have necessarily have more and more people paying into it. Like the very early adopters or very, very early benefic- uh, benefits, benefiters, benefactors, benefactors. <laughs> you'll get there. Benefit, you, you'll get there. Yeah, the people who benefit from okay. it very early on, like when it first came around, like, yeah, it made sense because there was uh, a group of people paying for the people before, right? Yeah. But like, you just, it, it, it only gets worse, 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 and worse. So as that gets used up, right, you don't necessarily have enough people paying into it. And to uh, that commenter's other point, inflation, if you put a hundred bucks in today and it's going to get used later on like it's not worth as much so you're kind of running a race that you're always playing trying to play catch up right so yeah social security is actually i'm not saying i'm not saying it's a bad thing i'm not saying like it shouldn't be around and that shouldn't like have its have its benefits for for people like there are certain scenarios in which these things are put into place to assist people but it's when it gets outside of those boundaries of like why it was put in place is when people get in trouble which is the problem okay any last words on no this social security social security thank you (laughs) any last words social and security okay yeah Yeah. potholes next story coming from r slash r i can't say slash either it's the s's today i don't know what's wrong with my mouth i don't know but they're not coming out right do you eat a lot of peanut butter what (laughs) you eat a lot of peanut butter that's what i feel like i feel like my like mouth is like my tongue sticking okay this is from r slash entrepreneur does anybody else feel guilty taking a rest day when you have a forever growing to-do list uh so that is the most common uh, it, everybody can resonate with that. Yeah. A- anybody in entrepreneurship is going to resonate with that because they're going to go, if I am resting, I'm not working. So therefore I'm not growing. But in reality, you're actually getting diminishing returns from not resting. So that's, that's the issue. If you don't recognize rest and working in peace and recognizing that if I worked eight hours a day, right? Or six hours a day, and it was at 110 ca- percent capacity and energy yeah. and I felt good and I was super productive Working six more hours that day at 40% is actually going to get diminishing returns the following day because you won't be able to be at that 100, 110% feeling. So you have to have what I call push and pull days. So if you have a push day, which is like you're, you're, you're get any, anything on your list got to get done no matter what, right? So you're feeling super productive, you get in momentum and you feel great. The problem is you can't put six push days back to back to back to back yeah. because you get diminishing returns. So what you need to do is you need to place pull days in between your push days. So if you have one or two push days in a row, you need a pull day. And what a pull day is, is it's not that you aren't getting better. It's not that you're not growing and things aren't improving. It's that it looks different. It's at more of a, it's at a slower pace. It's at more of a piece. So maybe a pull day is focused on learning 
or getting better at something or practicing something in a different way or or having that rest time versus I'm just going to go faster, harder, and I'm going to read that sign that says nobody cares, work harder again. It's just yeah. it's just not how it works because I've worked. What do you mean? You're not like one of those like motivation fluencers where grind. if you don't stop work, if you stop working, you're going to die and rise and grind, rise and grind every day. That's dumb. And if you're not working 10 hours a day, you're failing and you need to take cold showers and cold plunge and <laughs> And you should not eat a single fatty food ever because it's going to kill you. Also, women suck. The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get the misogynistic message in at the end. They're like, women aren't good enough to do this. Can't learn anything from them. <laughs> They're distractions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's, the cold plunge? No, I'm not a communist. I, I, I love it. If you don't take cold shower, showers, you can't be successful. I've never taken cold shower in my life. I don't think. I don't, no, I, I have. I actually. I, I am a I, fan of cold showers. I tr- only for two or three minutes, though. I tried it for a period of time. It didn't. I mean, it's whatever. If People are going to be morning, like, it's science and biology. It feels I don't good care. in the morning. If you do it in the morning, it like wakes you up. It starts like it. Huber, I don't disagree. Huberman with that. Labs taught me that, and I do feel it. I don't no, think that's a placebo. He's a, no, he's a gangster. I I love him. I love learning from him. I'm I, sure he would love to hear you call him a gangster. I, he is a gangster. I I don't disagree. I don't disagree with him at all. Okay. I'm just, I'm just like I'm not disagreeing with what you say about uh, the cold stuff. But I, my problem with anything like that, to your point of like the rise and grind, it's kind of I got it kind of got derailed onto that. But like <laughs> to your point of like the no rest and not understanding push and pull days is people think like I can just do seven push days in a row if I have that cold shower in the morning. Yeah, it's not. Or if I don't eat something fatty when in reality, if you want to form new habits, it's actually better to have fatty foods because of, I'm going to get too technical on this. I don't need to get that technical of basically the pathways that are made in your brain are formed from fat and so if you have it in your diet, you'll actually build habits faster. We don't need to go into all that. Okay. You can go to Huberman for that because okay. he's going to be yeah, much better. Yeah, go to Huberman if you want to He's going to be much this. better he's explaining stuff like that. a million and one podcast episodes to tell you all about it. Yeah, for okay. sure. So I'm just going to read the story because we kind of already dove in without even hearing the story, but yeah. it's short. I've opened two coffee shops in two years. I know I work hard, but it's strange when I have a day off and say, watch a few movies. Movies. I feel so incredibly lazy and it's a weird feeling. I do know I need rest, but why is there so much guilt associated with it? Does anyone else feel like this? And then um some of the comments for me i learned in my childhood i can still hear my mom's uh voice scolding in my ear at 33 years old i've uh i've got to tell myself i'm not going to be arrested for watching some movies <laughs> i don't have to be constantly doing something um every, basically everybody's just agreeing like yep i'm dealing with this as we speak haven't had a full day off in about a month like not any like just people saying they deal with this yeah it's going to be a super common thing they in my experience is typically based in fear. If I'm not doing that thing, I'm not going to get the result that I need to be able to survive or whatever, which is completely ridiculous. It's just something that we've taught ourselves. But when in reality, when I've slowed down, I've actually gotten better results, which is one of the things I've been most proud of. And the big change that I made almost a year ago to the date now is that I never tried to solve all of my problems in the first 24 hours, like in 24 hours. I just wanted to get better in practice each day. And I want to self-actualize, meaning I want to get I want to try to reach my peak potential every single day. And there's going to be days where that's spending time with the kids. There's going to be days where it's spending time with D. There's going to be days where it's spent learning. Um, It's going to be days where it's spent in paperwork. It's going to be days spent looking at properties or evaluating properties or buying or selling or whatever it may be. I saw a TikTok about it today. That's what I was pulling up while you were talking. Oh, okay. But there's there's a balance and a rhythm there that when you don't understand like how to take a day off, it's because you're getting out of rhythm. And your rhythm right now is just like, oh, I, I push, push, push. And the real, and I always like to ask this question too. If you're somebody who has to push seven days a week or you don't feel like you can survive, what are you doing wrong? What's like, what's the point? What? What are you doing wrong? If you can't take a day off because you don't feel like you can survive if you take that day off, you're doing something wrong in your business. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's like what your I business you should be say. providing you yeah, more yeah. free. As you become more successful, you should have more right. free time. Yeah. Like, let me ask you this. You can, you can answer this totally honestly. Do you know anybody that works less than me? Um, that anybody that works less oh, than me? Oh, less than you. No, I actually don't think I, I really like I'm at the point in my life I'm at right now, the people that I know, the only person who I would say maybe works less than you and like works, I put that in quotes as in like on the clock is my dad. <laughs> yeah, and we work together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's employed by you. And we, and we, and we work together. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because we wanted to build a life in which we had time, freedom, and options. Yeah. Like, there's no, if you want to work 18 hours a day, that's fine. But from what I've seen, when you do that, you don't actually get any further than the person working six. I'm going to redact my answer. Four or eight. Your okay. wife. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, two. <laughs> yeah. She's got the real deal here. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she, she, yeah, she, she won, she won the she lottery. She takes naps like it's her job. If, yeah. that's, if she's on the clock, it's a nap. That's she's, what it is. She, she, she's won that battle. She, she actually doesn't nap much anymore. Really? Well, I mean, she's pregnant now. That's so what I mean. Like right now she's pregnant. pregnant so yeah. I'm talking about pregnancy. Yeah. Pregnancy naps? Yeah. yeah. She's real I'm those. jealous of that. We're all jealous of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So I saw this TikTok. It was actually this morning that I saw it and I saved it because I was like, wow, that's so real. And it says, this is this is in Gen Z lingo. So you have to understand that when you hear this, okay. this is somebody else. Okay. Can you play this for whatever? I mean, it's not. Good I'll screen, let you listen to screen it. Screen grab it. It's just a sound. Oh, it's just sound? Okay. Oh, I'm, I'll just put it on the, I'll put a screenshot of it on the thing. Yeah. It says when you were having a lonely, uh, or sorry, when you were having a lovely girl rot night in your room, but you finished your movie and dinner and you're stressed about how you ha- should have had a productive evening instead. Yeah. People are so addicted to... The feeling of being productive. It's not even... No, I don't even know if it's that. Really? No. It's a fear of how others are going to see them that are like, why aren't you Why aren't you working on yeah. where you're supposed to be right now? I don't think it's a, an addicted to production thing. Some really? people, Some people, yes. But I don't th- I don't think a majority is. Then what do, you, what do you think it is if it's not? I, th- I think it's an addiction of image. How are others going to look at me right now? I don't feel good about myself not working right now. It comes, it comes back, it comes back to but when I don't, when I think that, no, because when I think that I don't feel like I'm thinking about what other people are thinking about me. Like when I feel like I haven't done enough today, mm-hmm. like, oh, I took a day off. I feel like crap. Or like when I get to the point where I've been traveling enough to where I return and I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to stop traveling for like, I took too many trips. I took one too many trips and like, I needed to just like work. Okay. I don't feel like I'm thinking about what other people are thinking about me. You, you are also not the demographic that we're talking about. You took 35 flights this year. <laughs> this guy's talking about, I can't watch a movie. <laughs> okay okay you are not you are not the same but believe it or not it's actually worse if i sit down and do something in my own house than it is if i take a trip what do you mean like i can take a trip i can like leave for eight days not feel guilty come back be fine that's but if it's fulfilling to you yes but if i sit in my own house for one day forcing myself not to work if i like oh i'm just gonna take the day off Mm -hmm. and i stay in eight hours in my own home it's actually worse i think it'll get better over time for you with that you think yeah because you're so young you like being out and like yeah you know what i mean um no i th- I really think it comes back to image for a lot of people i don't think it's necessarily for you okay. that's not the same okay what i'm thinking about is like okay the 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 poster was i have two coffee shops i rarely have a day off well for sure because you have two coffee shops and like that's very management intensive yeah right so not having the ability he could probably have three coffee shops and be more profitable with less time involved if he took time to sit in the problems that he has and solve them in a more productive way. But when you're just constantly go, it's usually either image based or it is fear based or it is uh, in- internally based where like if I stop moving, I have to face what's inside me that I don't like. That's good. And I think there's a lot of that one. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even think about that factoring into why people feel guilty sitting around. I've stayed in painful situations because I didn't want to, subconsciously, yeah. I didn't want to sit down and face and ask myself the question, who am I without this? Hmm. And that's a scary, terrible, suck question. Who am I without this? Who am I without working 18 hours a day at a coffee shop? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who am I if I don't have the coffee shops? Who are you if you don't have the videography, photography? World traveler. World tra- okay. What, 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 who are now, you? If you ask me who I am with if I can't travel, that's See? different. Yeah. yeah. So like if you had to sit down and like think through that and work through that. Yeah. So I think that's a lot of what people are, are dealing with too. People just get addicted to this, this. They call it work ethic. Some of it's work ethic. Some of it's just purely fear (laughs) 
purely fear and not understanding how to how to be in a, a healthy rhythm. Yeah. Okay. They're any, very worried about tomorrow. Any last words on the guilty taking a rest day? Just pr- practice not pra- practice not being guilty at it. That's such a common one. We should have almost started with that one. Okay. Like ever like. Because once you actually practice at not being guilty at sitting still, you will see a lot of other things in your life around you get better. And more stable. I'll come back to you next week on this. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're going to sit at home for a week? Yeah. <laughs> practice on day two, I get a text. I can't do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Next story. This is from r slash personal finance. Titled, Am I Financially Ruined? Probably. <laughs> not. They're probably, probably not. Probably not. Every single time that they think, like... It's like, oh, I have $5,000 in debt, and you're like... <sighs> yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> okay. Am I financially ruined? Um, sorry, they asked the question four times before it actually gets to the story, so oh, I'm going to read it one more time. They're, they're, Am I financially they very, ruined? They are very worried. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, female 41 found out recently that my male 37 husband has been going behind my back gambling for the better part of a year we have been together for 12 years and married for five i have known he had an issue with gambling and have gone through hell and back with his debt i've tried being supportive and given him tough love but it, nothing seems to work i reached out to his family but they all they can do is say is how or say is how bad they feel about the situation the last time this occurred i said to him i would walk away and not look back well I'm married now and still here and now worried this may be the end of the line for us. He has struggled with health issues, migraines, and issues with his feet for over a decade now, which makes it hard to keep jobs. I've been the one supporting us for the most time of the last eight months while he's um, while he's been unemployed and would, wouldn't get a low-paying job. So it sounds like he didn't want to – he won't take a low-paying job. Mm-hmm. Instead, he's just not working. Um, I didn't understand it at the time, but he didn't want any low-paying job because of his debt. Now that he came clean with his gambling again, I'm feeling lost and confused. He is getting called from collections, banks, and God knows who else. He managed to crank up the debt of about 36 k behind my back, and I'm wondering how I should go about taxes so I'm not totally screwed. Would it be best fit to file together and mark him as a dependent for those eight months, or should I do them separately? This person can't spell. They spelled separately with a C. That's a... Oh... Yeah. I can't believe I just told read that word right. Um, or should I do them separately? He was the one filing online the last year, so I'm not sure what he claimed and how it would affect me. I'm in a very confusing stage in life and will likely divorce if we don't have some uh if we don't get some counseling soon. That the answer not, to that is CPA immediately. But first I need to know if I'm totally screwed financially. CPA immediately. Okay. No, why would you be financially screwed? You're not screwed because you have debt. Yeah. No. It's it's just I don't care how much debt you you have. Thirty six k is a car. You bought a car. A nice one. Yeah, you bought a car. Yeah, like you can just put it on. You can just get it on a plan. Yeah. Like having debt on a plan is what's important there. But yeah. no, you're not financially ruined by any means. Yeah. Uh, you do have a drain though problem, so you need to solve him. Yeah. And which is probably by leaving. But it sounds like that's the only thing that's going to be like a wake up call. Yeah. Yeah, CPA immediately to answer all the filing questions because that's because they're going to be able to go through everything and go through losses and all that. But I mean, you can't you can't build wealth when your partner is constantly sabotaging you. Like if your partner makes you feel bad for working, feel bad for growing, feel bad for taking risk, and or constantly spend, not be on a budget or a plan, uh, not be able to forecast, and or have bad habits like that, you gotta leave. Yeah, you, just, you gotta leave. You gotta leave because that's because they you, they, she, they have to knows. change, not you, and you can't and you can't control them. Yeah, she knows too. Yeah, that's a, that's a conversation that has to be had of an understanding of like if my partner does these things, I will never get to where I want to be financially. Yeah, and um, then you can say, look, it's nothing personal; it's just business. <laughs> it's just business. That's when you can use that line. Divorce papers. It's just business. <laughs> it's just business. <laughs> this thirty-eight k is yours. It's just business. <laughs> yeah, it is yours, by the way. Um, thirty-eight minutes ago, posted. First comment, um, I have a friend who went through something similar. One, you should ask him for a full accounting of what he's done, spending and credit wise, um, and hid him from you. Two, you should run all of your credit reports and lock it through the bureaus. See sidebar for guidelines on that. You can compare that with the uh, results of one. It's likely he won't be honest. 
Three, you should consult a divorce attorney, even if you don't plan on getting divorced yet. This is to get an understanding of the assets and liabilities here. You can't make an informed decision about staying with this person until you know what it's costing you or not. Fact is, it's virtually impossible to lock down the spending of a person um, that's of sound mind if they don't want to. So you might have one or two come to Jesus, join gambling anonymous talks left to try maybe. Um, but it's not unlikely that you have to make the choice between staying with his, this person in poverty that he assigns you or moving on. Gambling's such a weird thing. Yeah. Gambling's such a weird thing. I've never understood that one. It's... It's that, it's that, it's, well, it's dopamine. Yeah. I can understand the drugs and the alcohol. It's, it's the. The gambling. I've just, I've never known anybody who's had a gambling addiction. I don't think. So I've never, I don't have any firsthand experience with it and like the mind behind it. If you have a, like, if you think of the psychology of money or psychology of gambling, right? Let's say it's the lottery, right? Like we would never play the lottery. It's the stupidest thing in the world. Like rich people don't play the lottery. It's the dumbest thing ever. Even only, if it's two dollars, I'm not buying a lottery. Only ticket. poor people play the lottery, right? And the reason poor people play the lottery now we look at it and we go, "That's the dumbest thing in the world. Why would you ever put money into that? You're like, you're all you're gonna, all you're doing is losing money." But the the other person is thinking that is actually a way out. It's they their, see it, they think it's their only way out. They see it as a resource, yeah, as a possibility. So that's why they put money into it. It's so like that's the psychology difference. So if you think of the psychology of like a gambler, right? It's that dopamine, it's that rush, it's that excitement, right? Yeah. I have a friend who uh, does a lot of sports betting, and I always ask him. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Well, it's just fun. I mean, if it's fun losing money, I guess. Yeah, but, but there's other things I can I can get that because it's like you're losing money, but there's other things that stupid things that you spend money on that's fun. If if he thinks that's yeah, fun. I mean, if, if that's if that's if that's like a singular hobby, that's yeah. why I was like, hey, okay. Yeah. But still, like, if if you have a gambling addiction, right? It is you're you're having, you're cha- you're you're not necessarily chasing a profitability. You're chasing the high. It's it's become a drug at that yeah. point. Yeah, that's why I've never understood. Like, <laughs> do these these gambling places, these like sports books and everything, God, make so much money. It's a crazy. Like, just just take this take this as a lesson. All right. If whatever you're getting into has to have a disclosure at the bottom of like how to get help, don't do it. You probably should. Probably do it. shouldn't do it. It's actually worse when they don't have a disclosure because I'm pretty sure heroin doesn't come with one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I don't know if we always come with disclosure. Well, prescription ones would, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not you're not wrong. Yeah, watch out for if it has a descri- <laughs> if it has a disclosure. Yeah, like if it's if it's something that can be legally marketed, but has a disclosure at the bottom of it, eh. Yeah, no, probably second not. Second guess it. I'm getting whiplash from these stories because we're about to switch back over to an entrepreneur one. Question. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no, I'm not. I'm not ready to go there yet. I didn't know if you had more to say. I just my brain is already switching over because I'm I I looked at it. I shouldn't have looked. Oh no no you you can go I'm 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 good. Okay, you're done on the, yeah, the yeah. gambling story. I'm, I'm good on the I'm good on the okay, I'm good so on the gambling stuff. Just CPA from- figured out. Yeah, yeah, and that one, you, step one is, step one action step is without question CPA, and that'll handle all of your tax and filing questions for you right off the rip. Yeah. And like how it's going to affect you and how it doesn't affect you. Do you stick this out? If you're if you're her, are you sticking this out or are you getting a divorce? To my reasoning, or see, that's an easy answer for me because I'm like coming from a logical place, not someone I've been with for 12 years, right? And you'll 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 go through a lot with somebody like, do they have kids? Like, there's there's a yeah. number of things there. But if you're in a relationship and they're doing one of the 12 things that I listed earlier, making you feel bad for working, making you feel bad for growing, investing, th- taking risks, things like that, not gambling, <laughs> not a gambling risk. Um, you won't be able to get ahead because they're constantly sabotaging you. So it's already hard enough to get ahead. Yeah. So to have the person closest to you always sabotaging you at the same time, it's not going to happen. Not it's not really ideal for not life. Happen. Yeah. You need to leave that person. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, next story is from r slash entrepreneur as well. I don't know if I can ever go back and forth with this again. I think we're going to have to stick to one, one form I'm or fine, the other. I'm, 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 I'm fine with sticking with one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Titled, What Qualities or Traits in a Person Make for a Successful Collaboration? Ooh. That's a really good question. So that kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to hold two differing thoughts in your head and still act well. But 
for for a collaboration, you want people that have really strong skill sets that aren't your really strong skill yeah. sets. So I'm going to use a quick example. Dustin and I, um, my friend Dustin and I. He wrote an incredible book. It's called It's All Your Fault. You should go read it. Go it's read amazing. It. We'll put the link in it the description. It really is all your fault. Yeah, we'll put the link in the description. He also has a workbook for it now, which you should absolutely check out. So it'll be 30 days to a growth mindset. So it'll make, absolutely change your life in 30 days. So, but what's, but what's funny of why I bring him up is because we are so similar in so many ways that every time we were like, we should do this together. We go, we have the same skill set there. We can't do this together. <laughs> we should do this together. We have the same skill set there. We should do this together. We have the same skill set there too. Like the only thing you should do together is be friends. We're so, which is what we always end up talking about and like discussing going like, we'll just stick with that. Because every time we get excited about working on something together, we realize we have the exact same skill set and we would then have to hire out the things that aren't our skill set. So like collaboratively, like you want to, you want to be working with somebody who has really strong skill sets but is the opposite of skill sets of you. Yeah. Right. So if someone is a great marketer, copywriter, uh, talker, sales, like, and you happen to be great at uh, vision, digital operations, things like that, like that can be a great pair. But if one person, or if both people are great at the sales and vision and the other one, and you don't have anybody operationally, you'll just have, you'll just be constantly putting out fires and lighting things on fire uh, together. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Just all, right. all you would do is you get really good at creating chaos. Okay. Uh, what qualifies our traits? Wait, Qualities. Qual- I'm not even in front. I'm not even in front of the it's laptop. Not, you're not even reading it. <laughs> what qualities or traits in a person make for a successful collaboration? You know what? Hold on. That just reminded me. I texted two of my friends in a group chat and I said, hold on. You want to pull it up? I'm going to look so I can tell you. All right. Okay. I was like, like one of the podcasts I was going or I was watching it. Yeah. And I said, if a teacher had called on you in class, could you do it? If a teacher called on you in class, could you do it? Yeah. Could you do what? Um, like, I, oh, no, I said, sorry. I said, are you guys good at reading out loud? If a teacher called on you in class, could you do it? Oh, okay. Because I, I, I always struggle on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like at 1119, at 1121, the response is, there's no way you have other friends. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah see that's why you guys are a perfect fit okay <laughs> yeah, that's why you're, it's your opposite <laughs> i can't read in class he's really good at it there's no way you have other friends yeah okay yeah, you're good all right i'm starting my third company soon i need someone to bounce ideas off of and get excited with me i need a hype man basically no it's so- all, all bad right don't even start it. <laughs> if you need someone else to create excitement in you to start something you can't just bring somebody can, on to make you excited don't do it that's the don't no don't the, the, you know, I need a hype man. We're not talking about on stage speakers right now. We're not now. talking about friends. Yeah, no, it's like why? I need a my, hype man. My goal is success, not wealth necessarily. What are the red flag personality what? traits that would just quiet? <laughs> okay. What are the red flag personality traits that would rule? Um, or out a partnership for you. What are top three qualities you would look for? I have several friends interested in starting the third, the third company with me. In in parentheses, nice ego boost. <laughs> I'd maintain control of the company, but split profit. Who am I looking for? Should I avoid friends and find a business partner on Reddit instead? Ha. Huh. If you have a s- successful collaboration team, how do you find them? Yesterday, I watched a Mr. Beast interview where he talked about having a team, three other guys when he first started out. They were on the phone every day for like a thousand days discussing research, s- sharing ideas, etc. How does one find collaborators that are similarly motivated? I want a team. He is talking about totally different things. This person is confused. I've... I didn't read this before reading it to you, and as it no, went that's, on, that's I was... why that's why it's fun. Yeah, that's why it's fun. This guy's talking about totally different things. He's talking about I, I want a collaborator, but at first he was describing a partner, and then he mentioned partner, but he's talking about a Mr. friend, uh, which I know exactly what he's talking about with Mr. Beats because he had three or four other people, and that all they did was obsess over YouTube for four straight years, and they talked about what worked, what didn't work, like the collaboration things. Like those are the things that you can do with your close friends that are exactly the same as you. Yeah, that's fine. Again, going back to Dustin as an example, me and him do that all the time. Like, hey, did this work for you? Did this not work for you? How do you handle this? Like, what do you think about this? Like, that's advice giving and friendship. Like, that is totally different from a collaborative partnership in a business where skill sets need to match, be be different, but match each other's personalities. Yeah. Yeah, or match each other's needs, excuse me, not necessarily personalities. So this person is actually talking about totally different and also, I do believe, has an ego problem, a vision problem, and 
clear and, and the lack of clarity on what they actually I don't think do. he knows what he's looking for at all. No clue. Yeah. He, it, at first it started as just like a hype man. Then it was, it sounded like a friend. And then it was, I want a partner. And then he was like, I don't want money. I want success. So he wants, so, so what that was, I don't want money. I want success. Just reframe the word success with fame. He wants to be famous. And he's talking about Mr. Beast. If you want to be famous. Yeah, that because is, he mentioned Mr. Beast. If you want to be famous, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. You can become famous. That's no problem. Understand your clarity behind that and, and how you want to get there. Because if you don't care about money at all, just spend all your money on getting famous because you can do that. Go spend your money on a ton of ads and a ton of boosting of posts and a ton of uh, collaborations as you're calling them. Yeah. But you're going to want to collab. But people are going to want to collab with people who already have some sort of success. Well, top comment. Um, they are trauma dumping. This is their therapy. Make sure you find someone who's genuinely happy for their friend's success, in quotes, or I mean, in parentheses, a lot are good at hiding jealousy. Then he says, I've never met anyone like this. <laughs> I've never met anyone like this. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, everyone gives like, actually like just normal advice here. Nothing super interesting. I think this was actually a really good one to read. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people out there who aren't willing to say, hey, I really want to be famous. How do I do it? If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But to do it in business, you have to build something and then share that thing that you built. People, too many people try to build a business while getting famous. They want to get famous while building a business. Not how it works. No. Not how it works. Also, yeah, you're so right. So, like, I'm not here teaching finance while trying to figure out my paycheck day to day. Yeah. Like, that would be... Now, some... I, I, I know of YouTubers that have been able to do that. And they'll even tell the story of, like, yeah, when I started my financial channel, like, I was kind of broke. It's fine. Like, you yeah. can talk about your story and journey, like, coming up, I guess. But, like, to be able to give confidence to others in what you're sharing, I think it's best that you've practiced it. Not only practiced it, but had success with it. Yeah. So, like, if I'm talking about something in real estate, I'm usually very confident in it because we've done it. Like, if someone goes, hey, what's the best way to buy this 140-unit apartment building? Um, I haven't bought a 140-unit apartment building, so I probably wouldn't be the best to ask. But I'd be able to point you in the right direction of people who, who have and that I know that I'm friends with yeah. and that I trust them. Yeah, the, this was actually a good one. The greatest three words to build rapport and to build understanding and truth with people is to say these words in order. Okay? Are you ready for the three words? Do you yes. know what they are? No. I don't know. Very good. It's the most honest sentence that you can possibly tell to someone because you don't need to know everything. You don't need to know every in and out of absolutely everything. People are always scared to say, I don't know. That's because it goes back to image. Ego. What are they going to think of me? Exactly. They're scared to, to look dumb. Yes. It's not dumb. And you can't look good and learn at the same time. Yeah. No. I'm a big advocate for faking it till you make it. Except for when it's like stuff like that. Like if. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you well, can fake, fake your confidence until you make it. Your fake it is to make it is. I feel is different than, than other people. Other people's fake it to make it is them blatantly lying. Yeah. 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 Your fake it to make it is like, I am going to try this until I do it right. Yeah, that's that's what it is. So you're using the I'm just going to, I'm like, I'm going to act like I know what I'm doing until I get it right. Did you say you gaslight yourself? Yeah, I <laughs> gaslight myself into, into thinking I'm good at things until I am. <laughs> until you are. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's different. That's practice. Okay. Well, it's more fun when you say you're gaslighting yourself than to say you're practicing. Who practices <laughs> yeah, these practices. days? I'm good at everything on the practice first try. Practice stupid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have one more story for you. Awesome. Um, it's super simple. So... I think it'll be a good one to end on. This is from R slash personal finance and it's titled what to do with about or what to do with $10,000. Oh, that's cool. Good job getting $10,000. All right. Whatever you did for that $10,000. Here's what you do with it. Uh, you do nothing with it and you do whatever you did to get that 10 grand. Do it again and do it 10 more times. <laughs> what should I do with $10,000? I don't know how to make the most of it. Thanks. That's the whole story. That's awesome. You don't do anything with it. Okay. So you're why? saying don't, don't, don't spend it. Don't do anything. No, why? Like, you don't, you don't have to. Yeah. People don't give themselves time. They think they get five grand in their pocket and they're like, I have to invest this or I'm going to fail with it. Learn how to trust yourself with money. Stick it in your pocket and understand that you control it. Go do whatever you did to get that 10 grand. Go do it again. Yeah. Go do it 10 more times. Go Make do an understanding that you have a skill set that can bring it back. Why don't you go do that thing that you just got that 10 grand with and do it 50 more times? People don't understand. Like, if you want to get rich, do the same thing a whole bunch of times. Yeah. That's I've bought nice. houses. A bunch of times. We've rented houses out a bunch of times. We've flipped houses a bunch of times. I've taught people education, uh, finance, and real estate, investing a bunch, a bunch of, times. of times. A lot of times. A lot, a lot, a lot of times. A lot of times. That's what we're doing right now. That's what yeah. I'm doing right now. Just do what you did that showed you your first success a bunch of times, and you're going to be rich because of it. Yeah. 
As long as you don't have a gambling guy with you. Then he's no gonna gamble gambling all marriage. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Unless you're in the middle of that. <laughs> then you might that, that lady's marriage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then don't do that again. And, and then, yeah, don't do that again. But Yeah. Yeah, do whatever you did to have that success a bunch of times. I'm actually very interested and then to come see back. what the comments are. Um, okay. It's going to be like 401k. It's going to be a retirement plan. It's going to be HYSA. Okay. Where is HYSA? I know I, it's in there. I Find it. It's got to be the first comment. Whoa. No. One of the comments, invest in yourself. Have an emergency fund and then VWC. I don't know what VWC is. What is it? VWCE. VWCE. First of all, I love this comment. That's amazing. Well, let That's me find awesome. out what VWC is wait, before wait, we no, commit wait, to loving it. It's no it. fun if you look it up. VWCE? Yeah. VWCE. Ventriloquist. <laughs> I don't know what this means. With compounding... Exits. <laughs> I was going to say compounding interest. Interest with an I, not an E. VW Investment in companies that manufacture and sell controversial weapons. <laughs> controversial weapons. <laughs> that, that. Uh, all right. So I'm going to stick with the first two. I'm going to leave the last third. I'm going to leave this third idea on the table. Okay, That's fine. So invest two in out yourself. Three, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> so invest in yourself. What was the second one? Yeah. Uh, have an emergency fund. Have an emergency fund. So basically don't touch, so just don't, don't touch, touch them. Yeah. I love I love that. I love the first two. VWC. I wonder if that's really what... Uh, I don't know. And then under is. it, somebody says, spend some, save some, invest some, give some away. Okay, so tithe. I'm cool with tithe. Yeah. It depends on what you want to achieve with it. Create revenue or just for fun. And then here's a long comment. This is actually the first one, but the one that jumped out at me was the invest in yourself before we got to VWCE. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's really what that is. Is it something you need in short term, two to three years? Answer is yes. Then put it in a... Oh. HYSA. A fixed deposit. Fixed deposit, okay. But whatever there will be... Um, or, but remember, there will be a lock-in period for that duration. If you don't know when you will need it, um, just put... All right. We're going to leave it there. There it is. There They didn't, they didn't type there. out HYSA. Nope, nope, they nope, put high leave. interest savings account. I didn't, re- <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't skim for it because I didn't know what they were going to call it this time. <laughs> All right, um, that's enough. I love this show. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you guys have questions, put it in the comments. And then there's also uh, links and further help in the description below. And then... Uh, if you have stories you want to share, DM them, comment them, whatever you want. Yeah, and we'll Ask share... Us questions. We'll share them on the show and we'll answer them there. So thanks for hanging out. We love you guys. We'll see you guys next episode. Hey!